In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, peace be with you. Coming together to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our sins and ask God's forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you are the font of all wisdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, by your cross, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, each day you feed us with your body and with your blood to heal us and give us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God. Have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who gave the priest Saint Jerome a living and tender love for sacred scripture, grant that your people may be ever more fruitfully nourished by the word and find in it the fount of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the book of Job. Job answered his friends and said, I know well that it is so, but how can a man be justified before God? Should one wish to contend with him, he could not answer him once in a thousand times. God is wise in heart and mighty in strength. Who withstood him and remained unscathed? He removes the mountains before they know it. He overturns them in his anger. He shakes the earth out of its place and the pillars beneath it tremble. He commands the sun, and it rises not. He seals up the stars. He alone stretches out the heavens and trends upon the crests of the sea. He made the bear and the Orion, the Pleiades and the constellation of the south. He does great things past finding out, marvelous things beyond reckoning. Should he come near me, I see him not. Should he pass by, I am not aware of him. Should he seize me forcibly, who can say nay? Who can say to him, what are you doing? How much less shall I give him any answer or choose out arguments against him? Even though I were right, I could not answer him, but should rather beg for what was due me. If I appealed to him and he answered my call, I could not believe that he would hearken to my words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Daily I call upon you, O Lord. To you I stretch out my hands. Will you work wonders for the dead? Will the shades arise to give you thanks? Let my prayer come before you, Lord. Do they declare your mercy in the grave, your faithfulness among those who have perished? Are your wonders made known in the darkness or your justice in the land of oblivion? Let my prayers before But I, O oh Lord, cry out to you, with my morning prayer, I wait upon you. Why, O oh Lord, do you reject me? Why hide from me your face? Let my prayers come before you, Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds have the, of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. But you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> Today, the church honors Saint Jerome, priest and doctor of the church. When the church says doctor, someone, doctor means teacher, one who teaches, one who makes clear things that others may understand. So this title was given to many saints, great saints. So Saint Jerome is one of the great saints, doctors of the West. He was born in 345 in Dalmatia, that is in uh, near to what they call now uh, Yugoslavia or something like that, in that Balkan countries. He was baptized in Rome and studied under the best master in foreign cities. He is one of the great, greatest biblical scholars that ever lived. He translated the Bible into start of Latin version called the Vulgate. He was very influent, uh, fluent, uh, fluent in many languages, especially Aramaic, Hebrew, Greek, Latin, and his own language. Jerome died peacefully in Bethlehem. If we read his life, he traveled from places to place. Even he was trying to be a hermit, a monk in a desert. He was in Syria, even when he was in Rome, even. But last he settled in Bethlehem. If you have been in the Holy Land, and when you go to Bethlehem, you see the place where he was writing the Vulgate. So he died there in 420, exhausted from his scholarly labors and life of penance. He was buried in the Basilica of St. Mary Major in Rome. They took his body in Rome. Santa Maria Maggiore. This great saint was deep in his studies, understanding of the scripture. Ignorance of the scripture is ignorance of Christ. So all of us, we have 
to learn, to study, to know the Bible, because it is the Word of God. In today's Gospel, which is from the Gospel of St. Luke, in chapter 9, from verse 57 to 6, it says, Christ knew the weakness of the young man who wished to follow him. He knew their struggles as well as their distractions. Like some of us, they had genuine excuses. They wanted to follow Christ, but they were not ready to make the necessary sacrifice and the full commitment. So, seeing their predicament, Christ addressed them. No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. Looking behind. And this context has grave consequences for our Christian life, for our Christian journey. It represents all unnecessary attachments. It does not permit us to make God's call a permanent experience in our lives. It separates us. It takes us out from being faithful disciples. One of the greatest obstacles we have today as Christians is that our attentions are so divided that we find it difficult to make any strong commitment to God. We give many excuses. Some of us are afraid of what we will lose. Some of us, we are afraid that we may not be popular. So we want to be separated uh, from God. We want to be one with others. But we have to put God first. Today, as we hear the word of God, the church calls us to be totally committed to Christ. We must overcome all the, the forces obstacles and vices such as selfishness, materialism, immorality, and all the bad habits. And I think that is why St. Paul, meditating all these things, what Jesus told, he urged the Corinthians, he urged the Romans to be good fighters. Our fighting is not only with those physical enemies, but the spiritual enemies too. The devil is working so hard. The devil is taking many souls. We are allowing ourselves to be victims of the, of the devil. We open our heart open for him and he enters. Once he enters, he will not leave. Instead of becoming the sanctuary of the Holy Spirit, we become the sanctuary of the devil. And that is mostly by our choice. So because of this, St. Paul insists the saying, we have to be good fighters. Once we become victims of these spiritual things, this makes it 
hard for us to be committed to Christ, to witness what we believe. We become afraid. So let us ask Christ to help us deepen our understanding of what it means to make a permanent commitment to him. As Saint Jerome the Great, who had many challenges in his life when he was in Rome, when he was in Bethlehem, wherever he goes, he had many enemies, those who wanted to attack him, to take him out from his commitment. But till the end, he fight, he fought. He struggled, he prayed. And he died in a place, in a holy place where Jesus was born. So let us ask this great saint today to pray for us that we may be faithful like him. And now let us present our prayers before our loving God. For the church, may the Lord raise up for her glory modern saints and scholars in the likeness of St. Jerome. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, may it know the peace and salvation of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for families in difficult circumstances. May God guide them through trials and comfort them in their distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here today, may the Lord help us to be more attentive in understanding his word and putting it into action. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died and for those who will die today, and especially this Mass is being offered for Maria Bird. May they know the fullness of God's love this day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful and loving God, we present our prayers before you, and we ask you to accept our prayers, especially as we are celebrating the Feast of your beloved Jerome, that we may study and understand your word. This may give us life be faithful to you and to one another. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, and work of human hands that will become for us 
the bread of life. As he did that. <clears throat> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant to us, O Lord, that having meditated on your word, following the example of St. Jerome, we may more eagerly draw near to offer your majesty the sacrifice of salvation. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, the Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For us on the festival of St. Jerome, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his life. Teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and the resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, 
giving things that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and the minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is prayed throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Archbishop, Zebis, and Daniel, Auxiliar Bishops, Peter, retired Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we praise that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may marry to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who so said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the face of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who look to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 